Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear friends. Thank you for joining us today for the ASAC Festival webinar. Today we enter together into the seven days period of alignment with the energy of purpose as it emanates from the place of the highest silent from Shambhala. And today we align ourselves as a group, part of the wider world service group. Leading to this webinar, since the new moon in Taurus, we've been meditating and planting. Planting seeds, trees and shrubs and flowers, linking with the soul of the plant kingdom and with the spiritual kingdom, preparing for today's ceremony of dedication of the global garden thank you for joining us today i invite daniela to lead us in the alignment that pre will prepare us for today's work greetings everyone please close your eyes or rather as soon as as Rumi says, close your eyes, fall in love, stay there. Align with your soul. And now let's look into our hearts, wherever and whenever they may be. And we will find this point of light within the greater light. This point of this strand of loving energy within the stream of love divine. This point of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God. And from that point in our hearts, let's connect with a point of love within the heart of God. And then, with the heart of our beautiful planet, letting her know that she is loved. And we'll extend this radiance towards the hearts and souls of all of our sisters and brothers in our group. And throughout the world. Creating a beautiful network of light and love and power surrounding the earth. And all together we connect to our group's heart 
this eternal flame. from which we establish connection with the heart of the hierarchy. And therefore, with hearts of all of its members. And on that light, we turn our back and heart to heart, soul to soul, we begin our work together. As we come together this first day of the seven day period of the Vesak, we prepare ourselves, aligning in the global mandala of the world group in anticipation of the Vesak blessing. Our ceremony today will start after a short introduction and short, um, I don't wanna say it, presentation, but sharing of a few ideas related to this ceremony. And then we will open this meditative ceremony with visualization inner and outer, where we will invite uh, those of you who shared your uh, images of your plants that you bringing in today to the global garden and we will be calling you by name and asking that you would tell about your plant and share your dedication line that you precipitate in during your individual intimate ceremony of planting and after that we will have the dedication ceremony and meditation Before I start, share a few ideas about the meaning of this, about the symbol of the garden as we see it. Uh, just for a couple technical points about the meeting today. We, the last few days, we had problems with our emails, and there is a chance that we didn't receive uh, all the uh, images uh, uh, from from you, for some of you, and so if you were not uh, didn't get response from us on uh, uh it means we didn't receive your image so maybe you could use then this time now on the initial sharing to resent try to resent your image and maybe then if there would be any problem just to be a raise your hand during the ceremony of presenting different plants and we would unmute you and you will be able to share your screen showing your plan. And also as we will dedicate the global garden, we will light the candle. So if you could please prepare a candle that you could light together with everyone, please do so. And I just got a note that there is um, 
people cannot see list of participants so attendee list so now the list should be available should be seen yeah there was a glitch in the system so the symbol of the garden this time this year it's a very special time for all of us as we come closer and closer in the realization of the our inner unity and of realization of our group connectivity as we worked together through the festival week of the new group of world servers a few months ago in december the fact of the world group unity became so vivid for many of us and that inner unity on the level of the group soul is now seeking the outer manifestation and the symbol of the garden that we dedicate today together is symbol of manifesting the group soul unity into the outer world each of us is a tree with the roots in heaven and flowers on earth. That's how our soul manifests, bringing all the gifts of the kingdom of souls to this world. This time, this unique and sacred time we working together to manifest the flowers of the group soul garden. Working together, we bring in the kingdom of souls, kingdom of heavens to earth. We do that by learning to function and live on a booty level as much as possible individually and as a group through our practice through years of practice we have that gift of being able to enter that sphere of booty and we can manifest it we can radiate it around us, sharing our love through our spaces, through our gardens, and we share it through our global garden. Our global garden becomes the space for humanity to come and rest. To listen to the note of silence, the voice of silence and through inner resonance to reconnect with own soul awakening to the reality of the kingdom of souls this time the devic kingdom is active and ready to come to work with us and through our gardens, we invoke Devas to come and stand together with us, protecting and beautifying this planet, manifesting its inner sacredness. It's said in the books that on the inner planes, this planet is already sacred. And it's work of people to manifest its sacredness.
as I said, this time is a very special time for many reasons. This year, in a way, we could say that the World Service Group entered into the new cycle of its unfoldment. For those of you who, uh, for whom the concept of the World Service Group is new, I could say that it's a subjectively linked group of people who inwardly perceive the purpose and direction of human development of us as one human family and those who inwardly recognize the responsibility to serve humanity in achieving its high potential. 84 years ago, Tibetan master Joel Ku shared with the world the fact of the existence of the World Service Group, the subjectively united men and women around the world who work for the same purpose. 84 years is the cycle of Uranus. And as this year, during the festival week of the new group World Service that happens every seven years, we enter it through the gate of Capricorn to the new cycle of Uranus, the planet of discipleship that's moved just last year to the sign of Taurus, this into the same position where it was 84 years ago, when the idea of and the fact of the new World Service Group was perceived into the minds and hearts of people. And thus, in a way, we can say with Uranus moved to Taurus, we open the new cycle. And Taurus is a sign of uh, world service because it's the symbol of Taurus is the eye, the eye of vision. And the world service are responsible for holding the vision for humanity. Through inner resonance, we hear the notes of the silence and we express it as the vision and to humanity, vision of where the path of evolution leads us. And that's our responsibility to communicate it in a clear and magnetic way. In a way through this ceremony, not just today, but throughout all these months and years ahead of us, as our global garden will grow, we will nurture our connectivity and we will learn to hear each other through the ethers, linking telepathically with each other and with the hierarchy, recognizing our unity. And as our garden will grow, we will be bringing more beauty into the world, creating the space for humanity to listen and hear the note of silence. We prepare for the Vesak. And Vesak is a special opportunity in the year cycle. We know that as we enter Aquarian age, the mystery of cycles will be more and more revealed to the groups and to the initiates. And one of those cycles, it's a monthly approach to the hierarchy during the time of full moon, or I'd rather say the time of solar festivals, where Earth aligns with the sun that go through 12 signs of zodiacs. And that period of full moon, the hierarchies, the group of higher enlightened beings who ever lived on this planet and committed their service to humanity. Meditate to align with the humanity 
to bring inspiration and the vision. But besides the monthly opportunities of approach to the higher realms, we have an annual moment of the alignment. And such moment is time of Vesak. This time of year, during the May full moon, it's a time when not only humanity, but hierarchy as well, aligning, meditating for the approach to the even higher realm, to the realm where the purpose of evolution is known and guarded. And through this meditation in this time of the May full moon, we align with the energy of purpose and will to manifest that purpose. This year, the approach to the Vesak festival is especially sacred as humanity is gifted with a special opportunity of silence. Through the global lockdown, we came to a pause. We as humanity collectively came to pause. And in a way, it's a beautiful collective manifestation of the Sufi practice when uh, practitioner, like a group of practitioners dance, they crazily dance, chaotic dance, ecstatic dance, and then master tells them stop. And they have to stop and listen. So in a way, we live in this experience of collective stop practice. And it's an opportunity to listen. For many of those of us who didn't have that opportunity before, this is a chance. And this chance will be magnified by the Vesak impulse. So let's come together, preparing that space of the collective silence for humanity, our global garden. Claire, would you please lead us into the garden? Hello, everyone. It's very meaningful to be coming together in this way for today's garden ritual. During the time leading up to today's gathering, we've effectively been preparing the soil of our global garden together as a group. In many and different ways, each of us has been readying ourselves for this dedication ritual, whether it's been through holding the idea of a global garden in our hearts and minds, and so bringing life to it that way, or through choosing a plant, or perhaps having a plant choose us, <laughs> and planting it in a place that has felt right dedicating that plant to our global garden in a way that has been considered and meaningful. Perhaps a line of dedication arose during that time that you will feel moved to share with the group during today's gathering. Firstly, we'll do a very simple visualization together. So I invite you to close your eyes. And to visualize us entering a garden we have long yearned to visit. A garden of exceptional beauty and calm. Richly verdant and inhabited by a variety of plants, the likes of which we've not seen before 
in the same place. Every plant group is represented in this garden. There are trees and shrubs, flowers, fruit, nuts, vegetables of all descriptions from every nation on earth. They draw to them a diversity of insect life and little creatures, magnificent bird life. And we sense the welcome and loving company of the David beings too. The garden we are entering was not always this way. It was once a neglected garden, in significant disorder. And we are helping to restore it to calm and beauty. Rearranging the spaces, filling them with flowers and birdsong. And with all the elements we've envisaged would be in this garden of our imagination. In Diana One, Master DK wrote of planting a garden. He suggested we see two things happen. The restoration of the garden and its growth in beauty. He urged us to spend time in this garden every day and to consider our tending of it a way of directing care and nurture to others near and far whether they know about this garden or not. Planting our plants and dedicating them today to this global garden is an expression of individual and group love and intention. As is our commitment to nurture these plants with the understanding this garden is an outward manifestation of the inner group soul and therefore of healing, restoring benefit to all of humanity. This global garden is a place of rest and replenishment where all are welcome. And at this point, we invite you to light your candles. Visualizing each candle as representing a plant, the plant you have brought, the plant you are dedicating. Seeing these as seeds of Eden. Small lights illuminated and brightened within the greater light. We dedicate our garden to our world group today, turning it into a shrine of consecration and connecting it in our minds with the intention of service, remembering that this garden is of service to our group and to the wider group in larger numbers than we can imagine. It is a place of gathering for many, 
and a place of refuge for those who need it. And may the blessings of our time today and the blessings of our time in the future extend out in all directions to enliven and heal and include humanity all around this planet and all living kingdoms. Thank you. We will move now into the part of our ritual um, that includes the dedication of the plants. Alexander, do you need to introduce something or do I just go? Yes, this is the time when we invite the, I don't know how to call us, parents of these plants uh, who share these images to uh, tell about these plants. And if you precipitated the line to share that with the group into the circle. And let's us, as we go from one plant to another, from one continent to another, visualize this garden connecting by passes of light, bridges through the oceans and rivers, and all connected by blessings of our group. Um, so it's, we will be unmuting uh, and inviting uh, each of you. Yes, Katya, please. Yes, hi. Uh, it's uh, Katya Kaufman um, in New York, United States. And uh, as a guardian, this tree, it's a mulberry tree. I'm bringing you the dedication that came with it. Everything that exists in this world exists for the purpose of the soul. Thank you. And the one on the right was planted. It's a English laurel, also known as Ottolokin. It was planted on the spine of a dragon in a garden in Brooklyn, in New York. And we are ready to go to the next plant. Daniela, if you could change the slide, please. So, um, this one is from Dot. And Tara. Yes. So I will unmute Tara. Tara, please unmute yourself. I'm unmuted, I yes. hope. 
this is about if this is a hemlock tree i went into the forest near the hill and the hill center is on a high hill in new hampshire it was started 50 years ago this year as a center for psychosynthesis and for peace here on a hill and a couple of days ago i went into the forest and talked to this little tree and it's a hemlock tree an evergreen tree and i said it would be very happy to migrate back to another place so i dug it up brought it home and dot maver and i both planted it and i said to her you know 50 years ago there were two hemlock trees planted here at the hill there wasn't enough money to go and celebrate so we celebrated by digging up a couple of hemlock trees out of a forest and planted them and i said now we have another hemlock tree evergreen through all of the seasons all of the challenges and difficulties and may it grow happily here at the Hill Center for peace building for the next 50 years. And Dot and I both recognized and enjoyed and blessed a tree with a double trunk, as you will see. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings and welcome to the garden. This photo comes from Anke Breckel. I'm sorry if and I mispronounced. And I unmuted Anke. Hi, Anke. Hi, hello. I'm Anke from Germany and I live um, nearby Stuttgart and I do not have a garden but. I chose this offshoot of an alo aloe plant because it's also a healing plant. And I read a few lines in a, in a book which uh, at once I thought very appropriate. They, um, uh, they, the lines, the line is, let not the suffering that hits you be the center of your thinking, but the inside to which the suffering wants to lead you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the garden. And Thank you. So when you go no, to these the... beauties are from Daniela, oh, we, we didn't hear what you said. No, uh, I, I, yes, nothing. It's, it's all right. <laughs> I, I was saying that's from Claire. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Claire, please tell us. Hi, hi everyone. These are plants that um, I planted in my garden in the South Island of New Zealand. The one on the left um, is an Angelica. Um, and I, I was surprised to learn after choosing this plant that it flowers on or around the 8th of May each year, which is Archangel Michael's Day, which is incredibly close to Waysack, which felt very beautiful and potent. And according to one legend, Angelica was revealed in a dream by an angel to cure the plague. So that was also an interesting surprise. Um, the second plant on the right is an olive tree. Um, I feel very strongly connected to friends in Italy and I was so aware of what they were going through during the, the early stages um, and still with this COVID um, lockdown experience and wanted some way to connect through the living kingdom with them. So the olive tree is a symbol of longevity and perseverance, peace, growth and robust good health. And the 
dedication that came through was that this plant be gifted, these plants be gifted to the Global Garden with my commitment to nurture and create open sanctuary for all and the garden as a place for rest. Thank you. Welcome to the garden. Um, this one is from me, actually. Daniela here speaking. Um, I live in Brussels, Belgium, nearly in the center of the city. So this little tree um, wanted to come with me and it's now planted on my terrace. And um, it's an acer, acer maybe. My dedication for it is a um, quote from The Appearance of Christ. May the light that always has been be seen. The love that never ceases be realized. And the radiance deep concealed break forth into being. Thank you. Welcome to the garden. Um, this one is from uh, Ishtar Presnell. Ishtar is not on the call now with us, so can you please read? Yes. So it's um it's a German rose, Astrid, and some other German names. Ishtar lives in Auckland, New Zealand and her dedication goes the rose of the soul at first the smallest seed scattered by the wind perchance in good soil watered in cycles of life giving grace sparkling gives life soon a branch and leaves come the buds begin to grow the stars watch carefully until the dawn breaks over the bow, the crimson, crimson velvet petals begin to unfold, a heady fragrance full, a face that is forever turned towards the sacred light. Welcome. I can almost um, the smell. Yes. <laughs> um, these photos are from Joe Waltz. And Joe is with us here. Hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. These plants I found because I thought I needed a reminder. I move a lot. I live actually now right. I'm here in a place. I'm surrounded by beautiful trees and shrubs and a kind of riot of color in spring in Oregon. And uh, there's a place where I sit a lot. I have two windows and outside um, the plants on the top are uh, pansies on either side of a growing little blossoming plant that represents group and the pansies uh, yellow to remind us to be informed by the Buddhic light, this light of Taurus that is beginning to surround us. And the uh, white plant behind uh, that idea of purification. We're going through a great purification now. But above it all, these columns of uh, spirilli, these plants rising to the light, to keep our mind on the future and the opportunity that we have in sharing everything that we are learning through these times in this process. So much grounded in group and all to dedicate ourselves to the planet and the planet's evolution. The little, what looks like a little plant, this is um, because I do move around a lot. I did plant, um, it was originally a blue hydrangea. And what happens with hydrangeas when they change the soil, the color changes. 
So this will go with me. I'm going to share it with someone that they can plant in their garden. It's a beautiful reminder to me of all the groups that are working. We come from the soil of the earth and we rise and in our clusters work and shift our light and our life toward the sun. So my dedication is, may we all be illumined to assist humanity in lifting human consciousness to the highest qualities of soul expression in every moment, in each thought, decision, and action. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the garden. These photos are from Margot Rush. And uh, Margot could not be with us today, but she shared with us that um, this beauty has been planted in Victoria, British Columbia, and Canada. She offers these plants to the global garden of love in which humanity will realize unity and express joy and beauty. And Daniela, I believe we have a notes about the names of these beauties. These are rhododendron. Yes, rhododendron and, and, and a yellow, yellow, yellow yes. beauty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yellow beauty. Yes. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Please join us in the garden. These photos are from Mali Maria Caligari. Yes, I will unmute Maria. Second, hold on tight, Maria. I'm... Yes. Yes, hello. hello. This is yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Excellent. This is Maria and the from, <clears throat> from New York, USA. And we have several plants here. Um to the right, we have beautiful new apple trees to plant. And underneath those on the bottom right, we have many morning glories to plant. At the top, we have elderberry, um, some helix. All of these are um, extensions of plants that are already in our garden as we expand our uh, awareness and connectivity. Um, uh, we planted these and the dedication was lovingly, we dedicate this new life planted into our global garden. May it nurture and bring harmony and healing with its beauty and may peace prevail on earth. Thank you. And we have more photos from you. Yes. All right. Actually here. Going on. <laughs> these are some of the locations where the plants exist. Uh, the one on the right by the watering can is. Um, this is a beautiful forsythia, which in New York um, at this time is one of the first heralds of spring renewal and hope. And when it grows big, it will be beautiful and yellow. And on the left side of the screen is our peace pole. Yes, you can see in the distance a small bridge that's the spillway from a pond, allowing the collected water to go on its way down the hill into the larger reservoir. We are planting next to it a beautiful quince plant. You can see in a small cage to protect it from the deer. Eventually, it will have uh, strong red-orange blossoms to symbolize the compassion of love wisdom and 
Again, may peace prevail on earth. Thank you. We welcome your beauties to the global garden. This photo is from Alexandra Radcliffe. And I believe this is uh, in her garden in London, a place of peace and tranquility. We don't have Alex with us here on the call, but she's with us in the circle subjectively. Welcome. This photo is from Birgit Rasmussen. And I welcome Birgit. Uh, I unmuted you. Hello, Birgit. Hello, Birgit from Denmark. Um, this is a hibiscus, and I planted it a year ago. Um, and it was very insisting to be the plant for the globe garden. And the word when I replanted um, came to me was uh, the will to love. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful gift, Brigitte. And welcome to the garden. Uh, two photos are from Olga Deligianis. And Olga is here with us. So um, actually two participants with this name, so I'm not sure if I will unmute the right one. <laughs> Olga, are you there? Um, if you saying something, probably you're on a the one that is muted, please unmute yourself. Probably there's some technical problems. So if Daniela, you could please voice Olga's dedication. And Olga is- Yes, yes. Yes, we can was, hear you now, Olga. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Yes. I was using two computers because I have problem with one, the voice. So uh, this is an orange tree full of flowers now, it's spring here in Athens, Greece, and fruits. Uh, I have a big garden with vegetable trees, flowers, and as I was walking, waiting from inside, which is the best to dedicate in our global garden. So suddenly, be stopped, stop me. Was uh, like uh, unstoppable home. So, I decide this tree because it seems to me um, like the world service and the dedication is like the power of one life and one soul. That's all the true service as the bees the flowers, our souls. Let the fruits of oranges will be the result of our service. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you so much. You so much. And welcome to your beautiful orange tree to the garden.
This photo comes from Jeffrey Wainhart. And I will unmute Jeffrey. Oh, Hi, Jeffrey. yes, thank you. I have uh, my gardens divided into two now, and I have uh, these are my peas, and they are um, sustenance for my body for the and and grounded and, and a play on words that peas like I'm planting peace to the world and the roots will go down and connect with the roots of all the other plants and in, in the global garden I'm so grateful on the, on the other side is uh, uh, in the I said is another picture and it's just it looks like just dirt but I planted flowers and uh, flowers specifically for use on my altar and i have uh, zinnias and paper flowers and bachelor buttons of all different colors and the theme or the the focus of the flowers is the externalization of the soul and i heard those words i read those words just recently and i thought Ah, how did I not think of that? The externalization of the soul. You know, so many times I've thought of the externalization of the hierarchy, but of the soul. And actually the two go hand in hand. It is one externalization. So uh, I'm so grateful to participate and uh, hold hands with my fellow gardeners. Love to all. So beautiful. Thank you. Peace to the world. Peace to the world. <laughs> Peace to the world. <laughs> Thank you and welcome. Um, this photo comes from the Heckel Group in Jerusalem. Ellen? Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello to, I'm uh, talking from Jerusalem, but the group is here present, and uh, Uta is also, if you can unmute her. Yes, I will do that now. And also Ifrat from Israel. Um, it's, uh, it's an olive tree. And it stands on the root of a very old olive tree in an olive grove. Um, I received it now as a present from from uh, from the municipality of Jerusalem to older people, and I was very moved. And it uh, represents for me a grounding, a very local grounding and strength. And it's a symbol of peace. Um, so we have dedicated it as a group. And I would like Uta to say it in English, the dedication. Yes. We are working for for the last seven years already on restoring and cultivating the garden of the Middle East, nurturing it with the will to love. So here we are offering uh, a peace tree from Jerusalem to the global garden. And we will say it also in Arabic and in Hebrew. And in Arabic, it is Sajara al Salam min al Quds lil Bustan al Alam. Hi, this is a flight. I will say it in Hebrew. It's a shalom, miu shalim, legan haolam. Thank you. 
gratitude. Welcome. This beauty is come beauty from, from Elisabetta Respini. Respini. Hi, Hello, Elisabetta. Yes. yes. Pleasure to be with all of you. And um, I've chosen this uh, pink daisies, which are smiling to all of us and to the world. We are, we have been closed down in Italy here for you know a long time and so the other day I walked to the nursery and uh, when I saw it she asked me to come with me and <laughs> so <laughs> I want to dedicate it to all of us you know for our garden and this is uh, the dedication may the sacred heart of all beings bloom bringing beauty and harmony in right relation with all kingdoms of nature for the greatest good of all so be it thank you so much all these uh, smiling daisies for all of us thank you thank you welcome This is from Rebecca Hood. Hi, Rebecca. Are you there? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear? Yes. Hello, everyone. This is a rosemary plant, as you can see. I planted it in a pot um, to dedicate to our garden. Um, and I um, chose a rosemary plant um, because I just have a strong resonance with it um, and what it has to offer to the garden is um, its protective and healing qualities. It's a very strong antiseptic um, and it's very helpful for clearing the mind and clearing the head. Um, it's a herb of the sun and um, bringing us that that clarity of light of the sun and it's planted in the middle of a round pot which is just like the sun symbol with the point in the center and the circle around um, representing group purpose um, focused on a on a common purpose that the group surrounding and focused on the common purpose and I didn't have um, a dedication of words, but as I planted it, I felt moved to use the bells to draw in the energy of the elementals and the etherica to support the growth of our garden and the growth of this plant. And um, my wish is to, um, or my dedication and hope for the group is for our etheric connection to grow and for the reality of the etheric to become known to us in deeper ways um, so that we can connect more deeply and um, be available for the etheric forces and um, perhaps the return of the, the Christ in the etheric which um, Steiner says will be our Christ will return but these are the mystery of the etheric to ponder the mystery of the etheric and to open that out for us and um, so my dedication was the use of the bells and something that I often do when I'm in the garden um, which is to sing Om Mani Padme Om to the elemental so I will do that now.
Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Welcome to the garden. And now we Go to the next, next to Belgium. And um, that's from um, York, Hiland. I believe Yoke with us, so I will unmute Yoke. Okay. Hello, everyone. I like Daniela. I live in Belgium. And yes. can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yes, okay. yes, we can hear you. Okay. With the seeds of this box, I've been creating a wild flower garden, sowing seeds of brightness and beauty, tenderness, joy, health, and creative growth. And this is dedication to everyone on our planet. But I can only send a, a photo and some render. But while flower garden is flowing. Thank you. Welcome. And now we go to France and I believe Josette's with us. So I will unmute Josette. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, I am Josette. I live in France, in uh, Vosges Mountains, not far from uh, Strasbourg. Our garden is a part of the forest. So these uh, three plants are uh, the, together in the same place of the garden. They are both uh, forest and garden plants. And uh, at the right, we see the, the little uh, plants, the new plants. Uh, went out uh, of the earth for spring. And uh, with the wheat, this place of uh, the garden has become a sacred place. So I am grateful for that. And uh, the dedication, this plant is uh, the one in the middle, is both a forest and a garden plant. It was dying for lack of water. It lives again and offers to the global garden its strength and endurance and tenacity for life. Its radiant beauty, its capacity to offer itself for being and all nature around. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing this corner of the global garden from France. Welcome.
And now we go to California. And this is from uh, Risa. And Risa asked me to read it for her. It's sharing the simplest of vegetables, the cabbage, dedicating simplicity within each of us as we approach Vesak. Thank you, Risa, and welcome. And these plants come from Denmark. I will unmute Lucas. Hello, Lucas. Hello, good evening, everyone. These uh, two little beautiful apple trees were recently planted in our garden, along with a lot of other nice edible things. <laughs> Um, and I named them Sasha and Katja <laughs> after my two beautiful friends who, uh, who happen to be part of the staff and the um, coordination group here. And my wish is for these to grow fruits of knowledge and wisdom for the benefit of all mankind and our mother, the earth. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Welcome. Thank you. And I invite Anne Marie to share about this. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is. Um, a plant called uh, Colias on the left hand side and on the right hand side you can see the friends of it in my window uh, and this plant is uh, has been in my family for several generations not this exact plant but this uh, kind of plant so uh, it, it represents uh, past present and future because uh, I, my mother and my grandmothers have had such a plant and my daughter and niece have it now. Uh, so it represents continuity and it's a very um, strong plant, loving sun and gets these uh, nice uh, dark red colors in the middle of the uh, leaves. And uh, my dedication uh, is uh, like this. Let us become aware of heartfelt mutual understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome and thank you to your generation. <laughs> yes. And now we go to Laura Kelly. And I'm not sure if Laura is with us uh, here. Uh, Daniela, do we know anything about these roses? Excuse me, no, no. We just know that uh, it's a hybrid tea rose. That's it. Beautiful. Welcome. More fragrance of roses in the global garden. And now I invite Maria Cristina from Arizona to share about this beautiful desert dwellers. Oh, heartfelt greetings to all as we 
plant a global garden here in the Arizona Sonora Desert has been planted a desert willow at the time of the equinox in honor of my daughter, Sochi, who passed three years ago, around right around the equinox time. And I would share her, and it's blossoming, it's really blooming. You can see no flowers to all these flowers in a month. But her 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 practice became summarized in the following words that she shared, which were drop into the heart. Observe, release, love more, fear less. And this plant will not only need the will to love, but the will to be and to endure in this very challenging landscape. I had thoughts on silence, but perhaps that's for another time, Sasha. Mm -hmm. On silence, not now. Or now, I don't know. Thank you. We will have all the silence together when we bring all the plants into the garden. Would it be okay, Kina? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And gratitude to the Sonora Desert Dweller. Welcome. And we have a few more uh, plans that's been shared with us as we started the webinar. So um, I will show uh, this beauty. I'm not sure from whom it came. Daniela, do you know? Excuse me, that would be Gillian, I think. If someone recognizes own plant, please raise your hand and we will unmute you. Yes, Gillian. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Right, it's um, Gillian from Norfolk, UK, and the plant is an off-white climbing rose called Madame Alfred Carrier. It's a very, very vigorous grower with a lovely scent. Uh, we had one at a previous home and loved it, so we've got it again. Um, my dedication is, may the fragrance, beauty and attraction of our chosen plants be reflected in our esoteric work. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude and welcome. Thank you. And now Daniela will continue showing some more pictures. Yeah. As soon as I find my buttons here. So um, this one comes from Piol Cassandra. I will unmute Piol. Hi, thank you so much for planting this beautiful global garden together. It is such a joy and honor to be gathering and tending to the inner and outer garden. Uh, the fuchsia plant chose 
chose me for this garden and I um, planted her today and the affirmation that came through connecting with the Davic realm was together we grow and we see beauty. Um, the kingdom of the Davers and the, the human kingdom, uh, what I understand is connected to the fourth ray, um, harmony through conflict and beauty and art. And so the human kingdom also evolves into the higher realms and we are the bridging point for the plant kingdom and the mineral kingdom. So it just felt um, very fitting that the plant wanted to express um, through the Davic realm that harmony comes, that we get to grow beauty and harmony together. Thank you. And I missed, where did you say you are from? We are, we are in Ashland, Oregon, USA. Thank you. Thank you to you and welcome. Thank you. This comes from Jeannie Ross. Uh, yes, I will unmute Jeannie. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Hello Jeannie. Hello, everyone. This is such a touching uh, program, and um, I really feel connected to everyone who's been sharing. So thank you very much for hosting this beautiful global garden. This is, um, this is a mint plant that one of my neighbors gifted me. And so I started out by putting it in this indigo vase, second ray energy on my altar with the symbol of the solar angel. And for me, the mint represents refreshment. The mint plant spreads easily and refreshes the body and soul. And it seemed to me that's something we all need at this time. So I'm happy to participate in this global garden. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeannie. And where is this plant is together with you? <laughs> I live in Maui, Hawaii in the United States. It's it's a joy to know that our garden extends to Hawaii, that part of the <laughs> beautiful world. Welcome. Thank you. This beauty comes from Darty Sessions. I believe Darcy was here on call. I don't see her. Darcy, if you're here, please raise your hand. She's here. I don't see her on the list. Can you see her, Katya? Yes, right after Daniel and uh, before Dayan. Can you unmute her or maybe Danielle because I don't see her in the list. Wait, no, she's there. Yes, oh, but uh, there is no, no mic. Uh, so it seems that her um, audio is not connected. Mm, that's probably why mm, yeah but Darcy wrote dear ones I have sent a photo of young pine tree representative of the great pine in the Himalayas which the Christ stands daily at sunset and sounds the Gayatri I will leave shortly to join the triangles group and continue subjectively with the group planting our global garden thank you Darcy mm. Namaste. Welcome. Thank 
This comes from Michael Linfield. Yes, good evening. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm speaking from Maple Valley, southeast of Seattle. And before I talk about the Norfolk Pine, I just want to thank Claire for the image that you're using for the entrance into the garden, this olive grove, which is from the Community of Living Ethics in Umbria, Italy. And the path, as you see, winding through the olive grove leads from the Hall of Culture, the Aula della Cultura, to Poggio del Fuoco, the, the Hill of Fire. And it's a very special garden. And I noticed that the olive tree was named in Jerusalem and a couple of other places. And I was thinking, as particularly the Jerusalem group were speaking about the olives and its ability to endure, particularly the Garden of Olives in Jerusalem. After the uh, sinking of Atlantis, uh, the story goes that when Noah was on the ark, he knew that land was near because a bird approached a dove with an olive branch in its beak. And I'm thinking, so this symbol of the olive, this is the symbol of the branch of peace, goes way back in our collective memory. And uh, this tree has stood with us and they're ancient trees. So the Norfolk pine that you see in the pot there, I received about four years ago. I was delighted to receive it. It's a very special plant. And then it started to die. One by one, the branches dried up and fell off. And I was devastated because I'm a gardener and I thought, well, where have I failed? I, I can't even look after a tree in a pot. So I took uh, my pruning shears and I cut it way back and I said a prayer. And two years ago, a little shoot started to come up from the bottom of the old main branch or the main trunk. And it's been growing ever since. <laughs> and it's actually healthier and greener than the original. And what it reminds me of is the power of renewal. And I'm dedicating this Norfolk pine to our global garden to represent the continuous re renaissance of the soul. Rebirth, eon after eon, civilization after civilization, lifetime after lifetime, as we stand at this threshold of planting a new garden in this new era. So I, my commitment is to be a better gardener, a better steward of this plant than I was before. I still don't know what I didn't do right. Or, so it's one of those mysteries. But all I do know is despite my shortcomings, life renews itself. And I believe that that's the symbol of hope with the pine. It's a symbol of continual renewal. So let us dedicate the pine to our garden and the spirit of renewal. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And we gratefully welcome this beautiful tree to the garden. This comes from Janet Robertson. Hi, Janet. Uh, Hello. Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Yes. I'm Janet, and I live in Oregon in the United States. And I chose to plant in the garden Echinacea. The Native Americans used it to heal many ailments. And with dedication and offering to our mother earth and health, I will. 
And thank you to all the beauty shared today. Thank you. Much love and appreciation and welcome to the garden. Thank you. As of yesterday, we had very few uh, photos of the plants and we were thinking about how do we have to restructure our ceremony. And then the last moment already when we started our webinar, the more and more plants started coming, joining the garden and we honor welcome each plant that's been shared and introduced and even if you didn't have a chance to do that yet we invite you to plant your plants in the coming days and dedicating it to the global garden we still have few plants to show and i honoring each plant i we just want to extend our webinar bit more and if you need to go please hold alignment with our circle and with the garden now and in the coming days of the Vesak. but um, Daniela if do you have any more plans to show because I have a couple more that came to me okay. through my email just one actually mm -hmm. okay. two plants <laughs> from Antoinette Dutois Hello, Antoinette. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for this beautiful program. I dedicate to the garden, first of all on the left, is the holy basil. I capture the holy air, the queen of hopes, spreading my purply pink aroma, purifying body, mind and spirit, and gifting the elixir of life. And then on the right, it's a South African plant called the speck boom. And this, especially because we're working so close with the sustainable development goals, I was thinking of adding the, this tree to the global garden because it fights climate change by absorbing all the pollution from the air and giving back almost double the amount of oxygen and making air more breathable as well as it withstands harsh conditions and restores land that has been destroyed before so this is my dedication from south africa to our global garden and thank you so much for the opportunity Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you for expanding and extending the Global Garden to South Africa and the beautiful continent of Africa. Welcome. Daniel, I believe there are no more uh, plants on the presentation, right? Indeed, indeed. That was the last one, yes. So I have a couple more that came as we as we go. So I um, will have to show my screen. And uh, this is from Hello. Hello. Antonella. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yes, um, so this plant is with me from many years and uh, each winter I doubt if it can uh, survive and it, it survives. So she, uh, it is so delicate but very, very strong. And um, so its colors, this uh, blue violet and this red violet in the center uh, reminds me about the power of love and um, and so um, the name is very strange is a flox hybrid katauchi 
I don't know the where it where it come from. And here is my dedication to the garden, to the common garden of good. The stars are the flowers of heaven and flowers are the stars of earth. So may the power of love, the red and blue, bring the comprehension of beauty to humanity. And just in front of me, there is a, a big Venus, which is staring us in these uh, days so powerfully uh, from Gemini, which is really the source of the second ray of the love. Um, so may really the goddess of beauty bring to uh, his or her, her sister of all this um, comprehension of beauty, which is loving kindness, um, intelligent love. Thank you. And thanks to, for the beautiful Deva uh, shown and um, um, asserted, planted tonight together, tonight or before or after. Thank you. Thank you, dear sister. And mm -hmm. This beauty is in Lombardy in Italy, right? Exactly of my balcony in Brescia, which is one of the most uh, hit by the coronavirus, but we are going better. Today is the first day we have a bit of freedom uh, beyond uh, 200 meters from home. So I hope that the coronavirus is not coming back for a, for a second wave. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and let's so be. Mm. Yeah. And welcome to the garden. Welcome. And uh, there is one note uh, in from Kim Knight saying, "Very sorry, never sent picture, but my one house plant from Auckland, New Zealand says hello. I dedicate it to the peace and liberation of humanity." Thank you, Kim, and please say welcome to your plant to the garden. And I'm sure there are many more plants, but I would want to share this uh, last image of a plant which comes from Finland. And uh, from beautiful garden that I had an honor to visit this January of, of Tuya and Michael Robbins and Tuya wrote a dedication together with this plant. It is called Sinivu, Sinivu Oko, about the color of blue as one color in our flag in Finland, meaning the relationship of to sky. So dedicating it to all great ones, great teachers who pours the ancient wisdom for the benefit of redemption of humanity by the beauty of our nature. Thank you and welcome. And I invite um, last person before we go into meditation to share about the global garden. Avon Madison shared with us this beautiful image right before the webinar, and I invite Avon to share with us. Hello, thank you. Um, the, the plant that I would like to have taken a photo of, but they're not available, is the plants of life below water. They connect with the SDGs and all the plants that grow within um, any kind of waterway, whether it be oceans, fjords, um, mountain streams, um, lakes, street, whatever it is, little creeks, just that dedicating that life below water to the fact that that is what is nurturing and honoring the, the 
uh, circulation of life and oxygen and all that is sustaining life. And I'm not saying it very well at this moment, but just um, that is so. Um, and the, this image was given to me really relatively recently, and it reflects the role of the nuclear world servers, where we are the intermediaries between hierarchy and humanity, but also the the realms of life of the animal, plant, and mineral realms as that intermediary. So this is in keeping with the dedication to the garden of our role and our stewardship in this in of this beautiful planet. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Feel that this oh, I image. I have to add one part that this yes. represents this mantra of we stand with the Christ and the fire of love to the glory of the one. Thank you. We stand together in the fire of the Christ and glory of the one. So we before we go into our meditation, I just want to announce our next, the second part of this webinar, which will be on the day of the Vesak, of the exact time of the full moon. And we will hold an, an online space open and that you could come and join us in silence. And in that circle of the Vesak, we will be linked with all other groups meditating that time around the world. And no matter where you will be, with which circle, with which group, we all be standing together, as in this image, united and aligned. And I invite Katya now to lead us in meditation to dedicate our global garden. And I would say we have like 10 minutes now. Yes. But if we get united with energies of light and love and will to good, and uh, focus our attention back to the group centers. And visualize the chalice of a golden light. And see all the dedications and affirmations that we heard and we didn't hear. That and we raise it into the light of Taurus, that life-giving, renewing light. And we dedicate our garden And by Master's word, we dedicate it and turn it into a shrine of consecration and connect it in our mind with a thought of service. Because the garden is of service to master's group of disciples, our group and others in larger numbers than we think. It is a place of gathering for many 
and place of refuge for a few. See your garden, sleeping in the darkness of the dawn. No real light, no sound or movement, and no life apparent. It remains just dreaming and colorless. Enter your tower and climb to the summit and then release the light which is in you. This will be to the garden of your soul what the guard sun is to the gardens of the world. Watch the rays of light pouring out over the garden, awakening it to color and beauty, arousing it to movement and life, and calling forth the song of the birds and the hum of the bees, and evoking it to responsive loveliness. There, Master might meet us when the clouds of glamour roll away. We ask to ponder on the symbolism hidden as this garden and work steadily for the next months from the center of love and light. So being one, rooted in the life of the group soul, from the center of love and light, we invoke from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door 
where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Maybe and let us do our part. Thank you, dear friends. This was the second part of the garden ritual. No matter where will you be on the exact time of the Vesak, please have a bowl of water with you. That would be the third part of the ritual. That bowl of water will receive Buddha's blessings at the exact time of Vesak, which we ask you to share with your plant that you dedicate to the bubble garden and with all living beings in your garden and around it and have a sip of yourself. Blessings standing together, the fire of one love.